Chapter 22 Beric and Garion slid back down into the gully with the gravel rattling down the steep bank around them. They've got silk, Beric reported quietly. Brill's there. It looks as if he and his men caught silk while he was trying to leave, then turned him over to Tar Urgas. Belirath stood up slowly, a sick look on his face. Is he? He broke off. No, Beric answered. He's still alive. It looks as if they roughed him up a little bit, but he seems to be all right. Belgrath let out a long, slow breath. That's something, anyway. Tarargas seemed to know him, Beric continued. It seemed as if Silk had done something that offended the king pretty seriously. And Tarargas looks like the kind of man who holds grudges. Are they holding him someplace where we can get to him? Durdick asked. We couldn't tell, Garion answered. They all talked for a while, and then several soldiers took him around behind the building down there. We couldn't see where they took him from there. The Murgo who runs the place said something about a pit, Beric added. We have to do something, Father, Aunt Paul said. I know Paul. We'll come up with something. He turned to Beric again. How many soldiers did Tar Urgas bring with him? A couple regiments, at least. They're all over the place down there. We can translocate him, Father, Aunt Paul suggested. That's a long way to lift something, Paul, he objected. Besides, we'd have to know exactly where he's being held. I'll find out. She reached out to unfasten her cloak. Better wait until after dark, he told her. There aren't many owls in Thal Mergos, and you'd attract attention in the daylight. Did Tar Urgas have any groms with him, he asked Garion. I think I saw a couple. That's going to complicate things. Translocation makes an awful noise. We'll have Tur Urgas right on our heels when we leave. Do you have any other ideas, Father? Aunt Paul asked. Let me work on it, he replied. At any rate, we can't do anything until it gets dark. A low whistle came from some distance down the gully. Who's that? Beric's hand went to his sword. Ho, oh, Alorns! It was a hoarse whisper. Methinks it is the Nadrak Yarblek, Mandarolin said. How did he know we're here? Beric demanded. There was a crunching sound of footsteps in the gravel, and Yarblek came around a bend in the gully. His fur cap was low over his face, and the collar of his felt overcoat was pulled up around his ears. There you are, he said, sounding relieved. Are you alone? Beric's voice was heavy with suspicion. Of course I'm alone, Yarblack snorted. I told my servants to go on ahead. You certainly left in a hurry. We didn't feel like staying to greet Tar Urgas, Beric replied. It's probably just as well. I'd have a great deal of trouble getting you out of that mess back there. The Murgo soldiers inspected every one of my people to make sure they were all Nadraks before they'd let me leave. Tar Urgas has silk. We know, Beric said. How did you find us? You left the pegs pulled up at the back of my tent, and the hill's the closest cover on this side of the fair. I guess which way you'd go. And you left a track here and there to confirm it. The Nadrak's coarse face was serious, and he showed no signs of his extended bout at the ale barrel. We're going to have to get you out of here, he said. Tar Urgas will be putting out patrols soon, and you're almost in his lap. We must rescue our companion first, Anderal told him. Silk, you'd better forget that. I'm afraid my old friend has switched his last pair of dice, he sighed. I liked him, too. He's not dead, is he? Dernick's voice was almost sick. Not yet, Yarblek replied. But Tar Urgas plans to correct that when the sun comes up in the morning. I couldn't even get close enough to that pit to drop a dagger to him so he could open a vein. I'm afraid that his last morning is going to be a bad one. Why are you trying to help us? Beric asked bluntly. You'll have to excuse him, Yarblek, Aunt Paul said. He's not familiar with Nadrak customs. She turned to Beric. He invited you into his tent and offered you his ale. That makes you the same as his brother until sunrise tomorrow. Yarblek smiled briefly at her. You seem to know us quite well, girl, he observed. I never got to see you dance, did I? Perhaps another time, she replied. Perhaps so. He squatted and pulled a curved dagger from beneath his overcoat. 
He smoothed a patch of sand over his other hand and began sketching rapidly with his dagger point. The Murgos are going to watch me, he said, so I can't add half a dozen or more so people to my party without having them all over me. I think the best thing would be for you to wait here until dark. I'll move out to the east and stop a league or so on the caravan track. As soon as it gets dark, you slip around and catch up with me. We'll work something out after that. Why did Tar Urgas tell you to leave? Beric asked him. Garblek looked grim. There's going to be a large accident tomorrow. Tar Urgas will immediately send an apology to Ran Baroon. Something about inexperienced troops chasing a band of brigands and mistaking honest merchants for bandits. He'll offer to pay reparation and things will all be smoothed over. Pay is a magic word when you're dealing with Talnadrins. He's going to massacre the whole camp? Beric sounded stunned. That's his plan. He wants to clean all the Westerners out of Thalmergos, and he seems to think that a few accidents will do the job for him. Relg had been standing to one side, his large eyes lost in thought. Suddenly, he stepped across the gully to where Yarblex's sketch was. He smoothed it out in the sand. Can you show me exactly where the pit in which they're holding our friend is located? He asked. It won't do you any good, Yarblex told him. It's guarded by a dozen men. Silk's got quite a reputation, and Tar Urgas doesn't want him to get away. Just show me, Relg insisted. Yarblex shrugged. We're here on the north side. He roughed in the fair and the caravan route. The supply station is here, he pointed with his dagger. The pit's just beyond it, at the base of that big hill on the south side. What kind of walls does it have? Solid stone. Is it a natural fissure in the rock, or has it been dug out? What difference does it make? I need to know. I didn't see any tool marks, Yarblek replied. And the opening at the top is irregular. It's probably just a natural hole. Relg nodded. And the hill behind it, is it rock or dirt? Mostly rock. All of stinking Thalmergos is mostly rock. Relg stood up. Thank you, he said politely. You're not going to be able to tunnel through to him if that's what you're thinking, Yarblek said, almost standing and brushing the sand off the skirts of his overcoat. You don't have time. Elirath's eyes were narrowed with thought. Thanks, Yarblack, he said. You've been a good friend. Anything to irritate the Murgos, the Nadrak said. I wish I could do something for Silk. Don't give up on him yet. There isn't much hope, I'm afraid. I'd better be going. My people will wander off if I'm not there to watch them. Yarblack, Beric said, holding out his hand. Someday we'll have to get together and finish getting drunk. Yarvlek grinned at him and shook his hand. Then he turned and caught on Paul in a rough embrace. If you ever get bored with these Alords, girl, my ten flap is always open to you. I'll keep that in mind, Yarvlek, she replied demurely. Luck, Yarvlek told them. I'll wait for you until midnight. Then he turned and strode off down the gully. That's a good man there, Berg said. I think I could actually get to like him. We must make plans for Prince Keldar's rescue, Mandarolan declared, beginning to take his armor out of the packs and strap to one of the horses. All else failing, we must of necessity resort to main force. You're backsliding again, Mandarolan, Berg said. That's already been taken care of, Belgrath told them. Berg and Mandarolan stared at him. Put your armor away, Mandarolan, the old man instructed the knight. You're not going to need it. Who's going to get Silk out of there? Beric demanded. I am, Rel Relg answered quietly. How much longer is it going to be before it gets dark? About an hour. Why? I'll need some time to prepare myself. Have you got a plan? Thurnik asked. Relg shrugged. There isn't any need. We'll just circle around until we're behind the hill on the other side of the encampment. I'll go get our friend, and then we can leave. Just like that, Beric asked. More or less. Please excuse me. Relg started to turn away. Wait a minute, shouldn't Mandarin and I go with you? He wouldn't be able to follow me, Relg told him. 
He walked up the gully a short distance. After a moment, they could hear him muttering his prayers. Does he think he can pray his way out of that pit? Barak sounded disgusted. No, Belgrath replied. He's going to go through the hill and carry Silk back out. That's why he's asking Yarblack all those questions. He's going to what? You saw what he did at Pearl Dew when he stuck his arm into the wall. Well, yes, but it's quite easy for him, Barak. What about Silk? How is he going to pull him through the rock? I don't really know. He seems quite sure he can do it, though. If it doesn't work, Targas is going to have Silk roasting over a slow fire first thing tomorrow morning. You know that, don't you? Belgrath nodded somberly. Barak shook his head. It's unnatural, he grumbled. Don't let it upset you so much, Belgrath advised. The light began to fade, and Rel continued to pray, his voice rising and falling in formal cadences. When it was fully dark, he came back to where the others waited. I'm ready, he said quietly. We can leave now. We'll circle to the east, Belgrath told them. We'll lead the horses and stay under cover as much as we can. It'll take us a couple of hours, Dernick said. That's all right. It'll give the soldiers time to settle down. Paul, see what the Groms Gary and Saar are up to. She nodded, and Garen felt the gentle push of her probing mind. It's all right, father, she stated after a few moments. They're preoccupied. Tarurgas has been conducting services for him. Let's go then, the old man said. They moved carefully down the gully, leading the horses. The night was murky, and the wind bit at them as they came out from between the protecting gravel banks. The plain to the east of the fair was dotted with a hundred fires whipping in the wind and marking the vast encampment of the army of Tar Ergas. Rel grunted and covered his eyes with his hands. What's wrong? Garen asked him. They're fires, Rel said. They stab at my eyes. Try not to look at them. My god has laid a hard burden on me, Belgarian. Rel sniffed and wiped at his nose with his sleeve. I'm not meant to be out in the open like this. You'd better have Aunt Paul give you something for that cold. It'll taste awful, but you'll feel better after you drink it. Perhaps, Relg said, shielding his eyes from the dim flicker of the Murgo watchfires. The hill on the south side of the fair was a low outcropping of granite. Although eons of constant wind had covered it for the most part, with a thick layer of blown sand and dirt, the rock itself lay solid beneath its covering mantle. They stopped behind it, and Relg began carefully to brush the dirt from a sloping granite face. Wouldn't it be closer if you started over here? Barak asked quietly. Too much dirt, Elg replied. Dirt or rock, what's the difference? A great difference, you wouldn't understand. He leaned forward and put his tongue to the granite face, seeming actually to taste the rock. This is going to take a while, he said. He drew himself up, began to pray, and slowly pushed himself directly into the rock. Beric shuddered and quickly averted his eyes. What ails thee, my lord? Nandorolin asked. It makes me cold all over just watching that, Beric replied. Our new friend is perhaps not the best of companions, Nandorolin said, but if this gift succeeds in freeing Prince Keldar, I will embrace him gladly and call him brother. If it takes him very long, we're going to be awfully close to this spot when morning comes and Tar Urgas finds out that Silk's gone, Beric mentioned. We'll just have to wait and see what happens, Belgrath told him. The night dragged by intermittently. The wind moaned and whistled around the rocks on the flanks of the stony hill, and the sparse thorn bushes rustled stiffly. They waited. A growing fear oppressed Garion as the hours passed. More and more, he became convinced that they had lost Relg as well as Silk. He felt that same sick emptiness he felt when it had been necessary to leave the wounded Lelderin behind back in Arendia. He realized, feeling a bit guilty about it, that he hadn't thought about Lelderin in months. He began to wonder how well the young hothead had recovered from his wound, or even if he had recovered. His thoughts grew bleaker as the minutes crawled. Then, with no warning, with not even a sound, Relg stepped out of the rock face he had entered hours before. Astride his broad back and clinging desperately to him was Silk. 
The rat faced little man's eyes were wide with horror, and his hair seemed to be actually standing on end. They all crowded around the two, trying to keep their jubilation quiet, conscious of the fact that they were virtually on top of the army of Murgos. I'm sorry it took so long, Aurel said, jerking his shoulders uncomfortably until the slip finally set off his back. There's a different kind of rock in the middle of the hill. I had to make certain adjustments. Silk stood, gasping and shuddering uncontrollably. Finally, he turned on Rel. Don't ever do that to me again, he blurted. Not ever. What's the trouble? Burke asked. I don't want to talk about it. I had feared we had lost thee, my friend, Vanderallen said, grasping Silk's hand. How did Brill catch you? Burke asked. I was careless. I didn't expect him to be here. His men threw a net over me as I was galloping through a ravine. My horse fell and broke his neck. Eddar's not going to like that. I'll cut the price of the horse out of Brill's skin somewhere close to the bone, I think. Why does Tar Urgas hate you so much? Kark asked curiously. I was in Ragaska a few years ago. A Talnadrin agent made a few false charges against me. I never found out exactly why. Targas sent some soldiers out to arrest me. I didn't particularly feel like being arrested, so I argued with the soldiers a bit. Several of them died during the argument. Those things happen once in a while. Unfortunately, one of the casualties was Tar Urgas's oldest son. The King of the Murgos took it personally. He's very narrow-minded sometimes. Beric grinned. I'll be terribly disappointed in the morning when he finds out that you've left. I know, Silk replied. He'll probably take this part of Thalbergos apart stone by stone trying to find me. I think it's time we left, Belgarath agreed. I thought you'd never get around to that, Silk said.